In this module, we will be uh, discussing the strategies to invest in real estate. There are various ways of investing in real estate and there are different risk and return profiles for each strategy. So first, let's introduce the core investment strategy. A core investment strategy is essentially buying a property and generating an income from uh, rental. The strategy is the lowest in terms of risk and uh, inevitably uh, generates uh, the lowest uh, return, but is also the safest. The next progression is what the, it is typically defined as core plus. Now, there are two approaches to create a core class strategy. One is to buy a building with a little bit of vacancies and work to improve that vacancy to increase the income. Another approach is to create a portfolio of properties and invest about 85 to 90 percent in core properties, so fully let, and use the balance of the portfolio, 10, 15 percent, to do something uh, which is more aggressive in terms of risk and generates more return. So what can be done to generate more return? Well, there is another strategy which is called the value add strategy. The value add strategy essentially uh, consists in taking a property which uh, is, for example, vacant and needs to be completely uh, leased up, or to take an older property that needs to be refurbished and uh, uh, repositioned uh, to, for a new lease of life. Finally, the riskier strategy is what is called opportunistic or it could be pure speculative development. Now here again, there are different degrees of risks. One could be just buying the land, applying for the permission to build, and then building the property. This obviously has the highest form of returns, but at the same time, it is also the, right, uh, the, the highest uh, risk. Uh, another is to uh, uh, form of opportunistic strategies to buy a property uh, or buy a land where there is already planning permission, build the property and then uh, identify the, the, the tenant. The, the leverage, uh, uh, also plays a, an important factor in determining the risk of investing in real estate. Uh, in general, the experience has, uh, has been that the, the leverage is the, actually the, the single uh, uh, most important factor determining risk. So typically investors who lose money in real estate are investors who borrow too much. So typically, in order to be defined as core, the, the, the leverage has to be either zero or very, very low. I would say 10, 15% maximum. In the core space, we could even reach a leverage. We could see the use of maybe 25, 30% of leverage. The moment we go beyond that, we really enter into the value add space and uh, uh, same with opportunistic. So it is a misnomer to take an asset, which is core is fully let, leverage it 50, 60% and still uh, uh, consider that strategy a core strategy. No, that is a very risky strategy that uh, should be compared to value add strategies. Now, one, 
subset of strategies that has emerged uh, over the last uh, 10 years is the long income strategy. So first of all, let me define this strategy and then uh, uh, I will plot it against the previous strategies. A long income strategy means to buy a property we, and lease it for extremely long period of times. Now this varies, the, the, the practice of long leases varies from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. So uh, typically the longest leases are found in, in the UK. Here, we are, when we are talking about long leases, it could be 25 years, it could be 30 years, 60 years. In some cases, it could go to 1,000 years. Okay, these are called grand rents. In continental Europe, it's typically uh, a long lease is considered 15 to 20 years. It is extremely rare in continental Europe to find leases beyond uh, 20 years. In the US, uh, uh, it's middle. It's a middle ground. It is possible to find leases uh, in uh, uh, excess of 15 years. Uh, typically, long leases will be around 20 years. Now, the value of a property with such a long lease is primarily determined by the contracted income. So what is the value of any asset? The value of any asset can be calculated as the present value of the expected income of that asset, discounted for a certain expected return. Now, when we have a, such a long lease, the, when we add up the number, the bulk of the return will come from the lease. And the residual part, which is called the reversionary value, represents a small portion of the present value of the asset. Conversely, when we look at a, a typical core asset with, uh, I would say, two to three years of contracted income, the, 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 the present value will be primarily in the reversionary value. Now, the reversionary value takes its, uh, I mean, the basic input from the current market rates. And the rents are cyclical. So the, the rents in a boom market will go up, in a, in, a, in a recession, they will go down. So there is a lot of volatility uh, attached to the rents and to the reversionary value. So as theory goes, the long income assets should be less volatile than uh, typical core assets. So let's plot this this strategy on our risk return matrix. So the long income typically will be below the core strategy because we are uh, uh, we have a cert such a certainty of. Uh, 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 income on the strategy, typically these assets are generating a yield which is lower than the core because there is very little, uh, very little uh, um, active management required to list the asset. Okay. However, some investors, these are typically uh, uh, private investors, uh, family offices, okay, have uh, um, introduced leverage in this strategy. So they will increase the leverage to increase the return. And that is what I call here the long income plus uh, strategy. But what is important to uh, notice is that this long income st uh, uh, strategy increases the risk. So it should not be compared to the return of a core strategy, but it should be compared more to the returns of a core plus, if not outright of a value add uh, strategy. So in, to, 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 uh, to summarize, there are four uh, typical strategies in real estate, core where it's the lowest uh, uh, type of risk and 
also generates uh, the lowest uh, uh, return, core plus, when there is uh, the use of uh, slightly more leverage and there is uh, exposure to some vacancy risk. The value add strategies, which is typically refurbishment with the use of some uh, additional amount of leverage. And then there is the opportunistic strategy where we really are going close to equity, to uh, type of private equity type of returns. We are talking about uh, 18 to 25% expected return versus a value add strategy that we have, we have typically a 12 to 15% expected returns, a core strategy, which will have an eight to 10 and uh, sorry, core plus, and the core strategy that typically will have a six to 8% type of expected returns. When it comes to the long income strategy, the expected returns are much lower. We are talking about four to 6%. But of course, with the use of leverage, those returns can be uh, enhanced. 